Hi everyone, David Looms here. Thanks very much for joining me for another video. Um, something a little bit left field. Instead of uh, showing you how to take what's on the screen at the moment, the model of a part, and turn it into an actual part, what I'm interested in today is how to take that actual part and turn it into this. A nicely formatted report um, showing critical dimensions measured using a probe. Um, in this particular case, I was doing two components at once, so you can see I have a section here for component one and a section here for component two. But it's complete with uh, measured values, nominal values, error between measured and nominal, allowed tolerance, and a pass fail column depending on uh, user requirements. So, how do you do that? Well, it's done in two, two stages. Um, first of all, you need a commercial license for Fusion 360 in order to get access to the WCS probing routines. You don't need the expensive add-on for the geometry probing. Uh, secondly, obviously, you need a probe. Um, should go without saying. Thirdly, you need Pathpilot version 2.7 or later to have the probing routines um, pre-installed that have this facility. And finally, you need the latest version of my post-processor. Um, that will get you to an intermediate stage that looks like this. This is just a text file that has all the results that were measured during multiple runs. There's about 10 runs um, in this file at the moment. Um, to get to that stage is basically free, apart from the Fusion license. And then finally, you need some method of turning that text file into the formatted report that we will come to later. So, without any more messing around, I will charge ahead and try to show you as quickly as I can how you set this up. Um, if you're interested, let me know, and I can do more detailed videos showing um, each of the uh, steps in greater detail. So, we'll start with the Manufacturing tab. Uh, as usual, I will create a setup specially for this. Um, the origin is going to be at a model box point. That top is absolutely ideal for me. Because I said I was going to show how to do two at once, we are going to have the multiple WCS offsets. We're going to start at one. We're going to have two iterations incrementing by one each time. So it'll do one in G54, one in G55. It helps if you give it a title because this comes through into the final report. Um, there we go. And that's really all that's involved in the setup. Nothing. Nothing spectacularly different there. First operation, as usual, would be to make sure that our WCS origin is correctly aligned. So it's done in exactly the normal way. We'll head to inspection, ladder pro probing operation for our vertical. There we go, we'll have that one, that'll do. And we'll have a second probing operation, and we'll get it to go around four faces of the base. Seems fair. So that should be our uh, WCS origin setup, and that's the way you start really any um, CAM setup. Um, nothing nothing unusual there. Um, for the sake of clarity, so you can follow what I'm doing, I'll create a folder, and I will put all the inspection probing routines in there. Um, at least to start with, these don't look any different from normal. So let's see, what would we like to measure? I think that internal bore would be nice. Um, I'd like to do the external boss. I would like actually to measure the dimensions of this base. So do the same that we selected earlier. And finally, I'd like to measure the two depths that are there. So I'd like to get that depth there, not round the back, round the front where you can see it. And finally, oops, the internal, and it's the depth I want. There we go. And I've managed to get them not inside the. Uh, Folder that intended, so I'll just move them. Can I do it there? Yeah, that's better. That's how it should have been. I should have clicked that, obviously, to put them in the right place in the first place. Um, now, if you ran that, um, there'd be two problems. First of all, it wouldn't produce any output. 
And secondly, if we got it produced output, it wouldn't be very useful because every one of these probes would result in the origin being moved slightly, which really isn't what you want. So this is where the PathPilot 2.7 probing routines combined with the latest version of the post processor come, come into play. What you do is you have the setup menu and add a manual NC and you choose manual NC type um, action and in the action you type inspection on and I will move that up to there and then I will add another one this is only required this this second one is only required because we're doing uh, multiple WCSs it's another action and it says inspection off okay now there's one last stage we have to do because I wanted the two parts that were going to run similar one after the other um, separated into different tables I need to pick the last one, go to the Actions tab, select Print Results, which is a nuisance, and say Increment Component. That will cause it to break the table in the output and produce a separate table for each iteration of the whole program. And that's as done. I haven't set up the tolerances um, yet, so if I ran it at the moment, it would not produce tolerance columns. If I wanted to add a tolerance, I'll just pick this one. Um, on the geometry tab, I can enter the tolerance for the position. 0.05 millimeters is about 2,000. A separate tolerance for the size. And over on the actions tab, I would select that yes, I want out of position tolerance checking and I want wrong size tolerance checking. And I'll hit OK. So that would generate the extra columns in the printed report. And that is all there is to it. You pick that set up, you post it and you run it in the normal way and at the end of it you should have a report. Um, so at that point we'll move off to the machine and I'll show you it running. Okay so out of the machine now um, I have the two test blocks mounted. They're just sitting in talon grips and it's against the raw stock so don't expect them to be particularly straight so don't worry if the <laughs> results of this aren't fantastically accurate. It shouldn't be too bad. Um, First thing to do is set the initial positions for G54 and 55, so let me do that now. I'll just jog the machine. Typically do this with whatever tool was sitting in last. That'll do, that's pretty good. Come it down a little bit. There we go, so I'll zero the three axes there. And I've switched over to G55. And we'll jog across to, that should be good enough for that one, and I'll zero the three axes for G55. And that should be us ready to go. So, program's loaded, and I'll hit cycle start. And we're off. Okay, G54 first. First couple of probe operations are just to uh, square up the origins. I have the feed in speed set pretty quickly, it's uh, 2000 millimeters per minute, which is about, uh, what would that be, 80 inches per minute. That's the inspection probing starting now.
Okay, part one finished, and now over to G55, repeat the process. All finished, so back to the office and let's see what the results look like. Right then, that's me back in my comfy chair. Um, thanks for staying with me and uh, I hope you enjoy this next bit. This is the interesting part. What I've got on the screen at the moment is just a Windows Explorer window. It's um, opened onto my network share, straight onto my uh, Pathpilot machine. And highlighted at the moment is the file inspection.txt. That's where the output from the inspection code actually ends up. Now if I double click that and open it, you'll get an idea of what's there. It is just plain text. Um, it's not erased each time you run a program, so every inspection run I've you do simply appends on the end until such times as you clear it out. So if I go down here right to the bottom and I'll pick out for you the last one that's been run. So that's the one that was just captured in the uh, video from the machine. I'll put a blank line there so you can see the start. So what it's saying is the program that was run was called inspect text block. Timestamp is when it was run. Um, that's a Linux epoch time. Um, go and look it up to find out how that represents date and time. The comment comes through inspect calibration block and the units millimeters. Now I won't save that. Up to that point, this is all free. Um, download the latest uh, post processor. You can generate this code. And as I said, I think I said before, the uh, probing routines since Pathpilot 2.7 already support all of this. So the remaining bit, which I would like to think I might be able to make some money from, it would be nice. This has been a lot of effort. This is a piece of code that takes that text file and turns it into something you can read. I mean, the text file itself is is readable. Um, you can perhaps extract the information from that that you want. Uh, if that's the case, then fine with my blessing. Go ahead. If you want something a bit more, all I have to do is drag inspection.txt and drop it there. And that's dragging it straight off the machine. What you have at this top section is a list of all the program runs. And if I go down to the bottom of that list, um, I have two here that were done. That's the one that was videoed and then I repeated it immediately afterwards for comparison. And you can see what's happening to the information it contains. Just what we saw in the text file that we have the program name, the program comment, the fact that it's in millimeters. There is the Linux epoch time converted to a genuine date time so you can see when this program was run. You then have a table for component number one. That's the G54 measurements. And you can see the comments that the user entered on each of the probing operations, the discrete values measured by the probing operations, the value, the nominal value error, and a pass-fail indication because I had asked for a pass-fail indication. Um, a little bit further down, you come to component number two. Now that is in fact, um, a web page. It's an HTML template that uh, if you have an HTML editor you can alter to change the style, spacing, table arrangements and not heaven knows all what. Um, but that's still not what you really want. You want to be able to write it to a PDF. So if I click Save PDF, this is going to go straight back onto my Pathpilot machine and I'll call it Inspection Report. And I'll hit Save. Over here, this is my window onto Pathpilot. It takes a few seconds for the network to sort itself out. There's my PDF. And if I open that PDF, there now you have the final results. So it's nicely printed with a header. There's a logo that's customizable and some decent fonts chosen for everything, a header and a footer at the bottom to tell you when it was generated and when it was uh, and page numbers and all the information from the original text file is sitting there in a nice printed report so as i said that's that's the fun bit that's the interesting bit um i welcome any comments uh, what people think of this uh, whether you think it's uh, a useful addition to 
what you can persuade a Tormach mill to do. Thanks for watching and uh, join me again soon. Bye for now.